Space is known for its emptiness. Galaxies, planets, and meteors. A meteor descends from the cosmos. No, 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 no. A body descends from the cosmos and arrives in your backyard. An uncontrollable disease, a plague never seen before, entities, and even an unknown cult. Welcome to the uncontrollable disease of Midwest Angelica. I'm Sir Chris. I explore the internet and I make videos about it. The first tape tells us about what to expect from a cassette that was being sold called Midwest Angelica, which tells about a body that descends from the cosmos to someone's backyard. The description of this tiny head says the following. The tape was discovered at the Oklahoma Sherrock site. It was recorded sometime between October 31st of 1991 and January 1st of 1992. With the introduction aside, we move on to the second tape. Home, a confidential tape. In 1985, we hear Dr. Lucas talking about evidence of life that was in Jupiter's orbit. And that due to the hypothesis, investigations continued, and they called it AZ-001. In November of the same year, it is confirmed that there is life... No, 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 no. It is confirmed that AZ-001 is alive. In 1987, when calculating the route, they said that the body would reach Earth's orbit in 1989. And with that, NASA came in and created a group that would be in charge of this entity, and would be also in charge of hiding it from the public. Until in 1989, Dr. Lucas disappears. In 1995, Ray O'Connor discovers the fact that the entity has a brain, and it was actually asleep, as said by the Delta Waves. On January 1st, the body passes in front of the moon for the first time. And 15 days later, a large piece separated from the main body, and it was called AZ-001 Alpha. And three hours later, Alpha crashes in Nebraska. At 5.25 a.m., Teams from Omar are sent to see the body, and upon seeing that it has woken up, they try to burn it alive, but are unsuccessful. And this tape is found by GFTC, and this was only the beginning of a big problem. After Papa Rico's announcement, a warning was released on televisions saying that people from those counties urgently needed to be tested for pesticides if they had the following symptoms. The strangest thing is, Papa Rico's was in Red Oak, and the counties were very close to there. They certainly came from there. When connecting with the description, we realize that this happened in 1995, and there were no reports of tests being carried out in those counties. With Alpha's impact on Earth, the Jones family wake up 38 minutes later. Collins is in charge of calling Greg Max, while his father goes to get the rifle. Until... an entity appears that end up corrupting the rest of the recording, but there are frames that can still be seen. An infected deer, which when the creature moved, is shot by Avery, and what appeared on the fence ends up killing Colin's father. And with that, the son runs into the house and realizes that his mother has died because of an infection. Until he dies from the infection. A lethal epidemic, the fifth, begins with the analysis of the contagion. In order to get more information, injects the virus into a deer, a coyote, and an onion. That the onion gives them a disturbing discovery. An intelligent mutation in milliseconds. And it's called Star Kill. The description tells us that this tape was found in an abandoned clinic in Red Oaks. The sixth tape begins with a report of an incident, and anyone who viewed this tape without authorization would be executed. On January 28th, Dr. Andrew Evans returns to the Alpha piece to take samples. And from the beginning, the audio makes us doubt something. <coughs> During the audio, we could hear Evans coughing a lot, even though we just arrived. The virus spreads quickly, so much so that Colin's mother dies from the infection 30 minutes after they wake up. 
The team ends up collecting the samples and returns to the headquarters 15 minutes later, in which they show us a recreation of the scenario. Dr. Evans stores the samples in the storage room, goes to the closet and takes a container to fill the water machine, which takes longer than usual, refills it and takes two cups. Upon arriving at O'Connor's desk, a conversation begins, in which he tells us that he wasn't able to take good samples as the tissues were dead, and O'Connor promises to help him tomorrow. Until 12.35pm, the infection starts to take over him. He ends up becoming infected because in the photo, we can see that there are two different types of hazmats, level A being the most protected and level D being the least. Evans had around C to D, while the one behind him had at least a B. Two minutes later, Dr. Evans enters storage 3B, which was on the other side of the headquarters, and when he leaves, he finds a security guard. When the guard see how he was, he was shot and died. And during the autopsy, it was confirmed that he had been infected, but by a third party. The description shows us a new group. One wall within the bunker was painted with a logo similar, but not identical, to home. On January 13th, Channel 17 shows its normal schedule, until halfway through, the Long Pine Church invites the viewers to their weekly service, and at the end, thanks people for their voluntary service, and O'Connor was one of them, even though he went missing. The eighth tape had the name of a demon, and it starts with the fact that two police officers had died on duty, Sam Page and Andrew Webster. On February 8th, a PSA appears and shows people who have disappeared, which the four people who disappeared were tanked by the church, which is later confirmed by an emergency call about screams inside the church. And guess who went there? That's right, Sam and Andrew. When they get there, Sam enters and begins to explore the inside of the church, while Andrew remains outside to prevent people from entering and leaving the church. While outside, he finds a paper that talked about a ritual. And here is the Starkill cult. And Sam is last seen inside of the church tunnels. While Andrew was walking outside, near the church, to see if he could find the reason why they were called. Until he found out the altar mentioned in the paper. He hears a strange noise coming from the altar and starts to run away, until he sees an entity. His body is found by unknown military personnel, and the CIA threatens the police to remain silent. And the last video shows us the stages of the Starkill disease. First stage is where the virus begins to absorb the animal's nutrients to be ready for the next mutations. Second, Starkill looks for a target with preference to the most intelligent. The third stage, Starkill is sustainable to the point where it creates new entities and creates two centers. And the last stage was still unknown, but at the speed of which things are happening, next year they should know, and everything ends. But the description leaves me with a bitter taste. The tip was recovered from the remains of a home convoy. February 33rd of 1999 seems to be the last time any new material was created by the original home. Okay, let's start from the beginning. It all starts with Tape 2, in 1985, where the AZ-001 is discovered. In 1989, NASA creates a specific group called Home, whose objective is to get in touch with the body and hide it from the public. And that same year, Dr. Lucas disappears mysteriously. In 1995, there was a warning to urgently do a pesticide test in several counties. And I blame Papa Rico's for that. And that same year, Ray O'Connor discovered that the body was asleep due to Delta waves. On January 16th at 3.50am, a large piece of the body falls to the ground. More specifically, near the Jones family backyard which at 4.30 a.m. everybody wakes up, and the father and son go to see what was wrong, which eventually his father dies, and Collins runs inside, 
to find his mom's room door with a big blood stain. And so he continues to run. Until after running for almost an hour, he ends up dying at 5.42 am. But 17 minutes before, the home team arrives at the scene. And when seeing that he was alive, they try to burn it down, but are unsuccessful. Some team members end up finding Colin's camera, as stated in the description, but not the body, as he's now part of the entity. So much so that family appears while he looks at the temple. Then comes step 5, where the team returns and begins to analyze the Starkill virus, in which they see that the virus has its own intelligence and that in milliseconds, it can spread on food. On January 28th, Dr. Evans returns to the Fallen Peace to collect samples. But it was a little strange. One of his biggest mistakes might have been the fact that he used an azimuth that protect him less. And so, at 12.37pm, he ended up being shot for showing bizarre behavior. And now, the home headquarters was compromised. In the 8th tape, they show us that 4 of the 8 members that were tanked by the church are now missing. And an emergency call comes, in which Andrew and Sam are sent to see what was happening inside the church. Sam enters and ends up dying inside the tunnels. And Andrew sees the altar and tries to escape, but it was too late. This makes me think that the virus is smarter than it seems, and that the people who perform the ritual are actually members of the entity, posing as members of a church to feed the altars with uninfected people. The penultimate tape shows us the stages of that devastating disease. And finally, they launch the announcement about the film Midwest Angelica, which is an attempt by the CIA to deceive people who want to talk about what really happened, and pretend it was actually all a movie called Midwest Angelica. Like, haha, <laughs> you silly! It was actually all a film. It never really happened. Please don't leave the country. Midwest Angelica is not over yet. And it honestly exceeded my expectations.